Well, welcome everyone to Home Office Hours Live with Vistaprint. Thank you so much for joining us today. If this is the first time that you are hopping on with us, Home Office Hours is a series of live discussions that we've put together on timely topics and we'll be featuring guest speakers as well as our very own Vistaprint team members. We know that small business needs have changed during these times and we wanted to help. So we created this series as a way for us all to connect and share advice. So today we've got with us Robin Van Cura, who is a returning guest, and she is our global PR, social, and content marketing lead here at Vistaprint. Robin, can you give the audience a hello? Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. Thanks for joining us. And we also have a Vistaprint customer, Charlotte Fancy, as our guest on today. And Charlotte is the founder of Boo's Toy Shop, which is a toy shop in the UK. And they've got both a physical brick and mortar presence as well as e-commerce. Charlotte, can you say hello? Hi, everybody. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. So today we're talking about how you can get your business ready for the holiday season, obviously top of mind right now and one that is sure to be different this year. Um, a couple of housekeeping items before we jump into it. We're going to take questions at the end of the session, but feel free to submit them throughout. If you're on the Zoom, you can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And if you're on the Facebook live stream, you can just add your question in the comments and we'll get those here in the Zoom and we'll take those here as well. And then finally, the recording is going to be available up on Vistaprint's YouTube channel after today and we'll email it out as well to anybody who did register on the Zoom. So let's jump into it, Robin. Uh, let's start with you. I know that we at Vistaprint have come up with a month by month checklist of what small businesses should really be doing to get ready for this big holiday season. So let's start with October, it's where we are now. Um, what do we suggest that you should be doing right now to get ready in October? Sure, thanks Corey. So I think I'm gonna bucket it in five different key points that I think that everybody should be focused on right now. The first would be to create a holiday budget. You really wanna just keep it realistic and stick to it. Your second thing is to get inspired. And I think this is probably one of the most fun pieces. So here's where you check what, out what other businesses are doing during the holidays by perusing Pinterest, looking at their Facebook advertisement, Instagram posts, or engaging in discussion boards to gather learnings. Or like like <laughs> What's that? Is it a little light social stalking? <laughs> of course, of course. Um, that's where all the fun happens. The third thing I'd say is to do some market research. So ask yourself, what are your customers looking for this holiday season and how will you meet those demands? The fourth thing is prepare your inventory. This is a key one. You, you really need to get ahead of your inventory. The holiday rush will be upon you sooner than you think and getting your high season inventory ordered and in order is imperative. And the last one I'd say is probably to order your advertising materials. So now's the time to get all those materials um, for your sales, whether it's banners, postcards, flyers, and the like. Um, sometimes people will be thinking about their great holiday packaging. Do you want to add stickers? Do you want to um, put in little thank you notes? However you want to do it to just personalize it, make the holiday fun and engaging. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, that definitely helps kind of simplify what I think is probably a very long list for a lot of small business owners. Um, Charlotte, can you bring this to life for us? Uh, you're a toy shop owner. This has to be just a crazy season for you. What, what <laughs> are you doing right now to get ready? So it is a crazy season. And as you can kind of see, we started to get ready for Christmas um, because we're planning our second um, filming a special Christmas video that will go out on all our social media to kind of engage with our customers, to show customers all the new things that are coming in and to have a little bit of fun with it as well. And we find that those Instagram um, TV films are, are absolutely brilliant. October is a crazy time, but it has been crazy really throughout the summer because of the times that we're living in with COVID. Um, and it's all about planning. And now more than ever, we have to work closely with our suppliers to make sure we're gonna have those key gifts and that exact point about your inventory. It's just making sure that we have got those gifts that we're not going to disappoint people um, over Christmas by not having. And also have a bit of fun with it as well. Be really creative and really enjoy what you're doing and make those social media posts and all that engagement fun and interactive. We've decided that we're going to do some open evenings in the shop where people can kind of have more of a personal shopping experience if they're a bit nervous still about going out in the day. Um, but yeah, planning 
having fun and uh, just keep talking to those suppliers and uh, making sure that you know you're keeping that stock coming in as quickly as possible yes i'm sure that's that's so critical right now especially as a toy shop you you yeah. wouldn't want to disappoint anybody <laughs> I think Charlotte um, wins for the best backdrop on the Zoom oh, call. Oh, this amazing. is amazing. <laughs> I wish we could get over to the UK and go oh. shopping ourselves. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. This actually leads me to my next question. Um, we have suggested on the checklist that in November, you should be really working on those visuals for you know your storefront if you are a brick and mortar or your website if you've got one of those. Charlotte, you've, you've got both and I can see, of course, what you've done in your store. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing on the website and maybe the process of, of how you got the store looking so beautiful. Yeah, so um, we, as I said, we started to turn the store Christmas about two weeks ago, ready for our filming that's going to take place on Sunday. This year, we've kind of gone in for an autumn feel to a Christmas feel within our windows. So we've got lots of like woodland animals, uh, lots of snowflakes, and we have a Christmas tree, which is actually in front of me. In terms of the website, we don't like to turn that Christmassy until around the 1st of November, partly because Halloween has become quite a bigger thing over here as well for us and um, people are wanting to enjoy and have fun and I think if we turn the Christmas on before then it might make people think oh no it's Christmas but it is it is Christmas it's coming um so the 1st of November we'll turn our Christmas shop on you'll be able to order from our ideas we try and break things down into stocking fillers um to some of those bigger presents and um, we try and do things by age as well to make sure that when grandparents or parents are shopping we try and make that that experience as smooth as possible but we like to put them into these categories and that hopefully that will engage people to go to the right place on our website and they're not having to search and and um, get confused of where they're looking so that always works really well for us but yeah first of November everything becomes Christmas and everything becomes magical. Awesome well I'm excited to see it. Thank you. Robin, um, I know that on our checklist we, we've talked a little bit about November and this storefront and virtual you know website decorating as well do we have any uh tips that charlotte hasn't already covered well clearly charlotte's doing the best job of that in-store appearance and i'd say online um you know charlotte's spot on the you really just want to make sure it's a very inviting holiday like feel um no matter where your cu your customer is shopping with you whether they're receiving an email or whether they're get on your website or, or whether they're on your social pages or they're going into your store you just want to be in that magical moment with them and it allows them to get excited about the holiday season um the only other things i'd think about from a november holiday prep perspective uh, is really whether you and i think charlotte even talked to this a little bit about having those um those private events, you know, in these COVID times, making people feel more comfortable, or, or even um, if you're thinking about doing thank you notes to some of your best customers, this is the time to do that as well. And, um, and really just giving thanks um, really goes a long way. Yeah, definitely. I think that's, that's important not to forget. And with the private shopping events, I think those are an awesome idea. So I think that that's wonderful to start getting those set up for November too. Yeah. Um, so Charlotte, you mentioned a little bit about social. Are there any uh, particular like product focus or season focused hashtags that you use to try to get people engaging? So um, we, in, in terms of the hashtags, we, we really try and target our core customer, which is preschoolers, toddlers, obviously mums, new mums, um, obviously everything hashtag Christmas um, coming into it. And we, we just try and have fun with it. At the moment, I'm still finding it quite early to see what the, the catchy hashtag is going to be for this season. Um, but we do kind of create our own in terms of Boo's Toy Shop, Boo's Christmas 2020. And yeah, just having fun. But our biggest hashtag for us is wooden toys. It's all about the wooden toys, as you can see from the, from the background. So, you know, that's the one that we tend to use most of. But we all try and catch on. We're always doing research with, um, you know, I shouldn't say it out loud with our competitors, but, you know, you need to keep up, you need to keep on top of the hashtags that are being used and regularly by other people and what's getting noticed. So I tend to do a weekly check to make sure that have some of my hashtags dropped off. Um, have there been some new ones that have come up in the ranking? So that's a really good point to, to keep looking at your hashtags to make sure that you're engaging with your customers still. Awesome. Thank you. 
And you mentioned the other day when we were talking about someone on social um, picking up and posting something about your shop and it really having a big impact. And I know you, you may or may not be able to talk too much about that, but just wondering if there's anything at high level that you can tell us. Absolutely. So um, uh, a huge influencer celebrity in the UK picked up on something that we had in store and they decided to share it to their Instagram account. Their Instagram account has around 3.8 million followers. Um, so this happened last week to us and within three days our Instagram following increased by 5,000 uh, followers which was incredible. Um, it's uh, increased our traffic on our website, orders are coming in absolutely crazily, we're actually in that position where we feel like it's Christmas now. Um, and that power of the influencer, that power if you can get something across to somebody and then they share it, is just absolutely incredible. And I think I've been totally overwhelmed and blown away to the response. And actually people going, we didn't know you, were, you existed, you've got such a beautiful shop. And the item that was actually um, purchased, it's quite interesting that lots of people have purchased that item, but actually the conversion is higher on other things that we sell in the shop, which is incredible. So really um, work with your Instagram and uh, your hashtags and, you know, following people and that whole social engagement. I think people sometimes think when you're on social media, it's just about posting. It's not, it's about engaging. It's about talking. Let's start that conversation. And that's the best way of being able to increase your sales. Awesome. Amazing. Congratulations. Great advice. Thank you. <laughs> I know. I would like the four million, but I'll, I'll stick to where I am at the moment. It's quite nice. <laughs> one follower at a time. Absolutely. And every one of them counts. So that's the main thing. And it sounds like you're off to an awesome start. <laughs> So let's talk sales, you know, now that we're, we're talking about what you're doing in November. I know here in the U.S. there are a lot of big sale days, um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, there's Small Business Saturday here. Do you have any big sales like that that you pick up in the U.K.? Are those big for you as well? Um, and, and what do you do to prepare? So um, Black Friday for us is a bit more of a quiet one because we find that people will kind of hit the larger retailers um, in the U.K., but um, we still tend to get really good footfall through our shop on that day. Cyber Monday, an absolute key. So that's why it's really important that your inventory is up to, up to date. For me, I'm a massive campaigner for Small Business Saturday in the UK, which is the 5th of December this year. Um, I was lucky enough uh, in 2016 to be selected as one of the one, uh, Small Business 100s for the UK and got to go down to Downing Street and promote my business. Um, Small Business Saturday is, yeah, it's amazing. And if anyone in the UK, US, you need to get behind this amazing campaign because it really does work and it opens up so many opportunities. Um, so lots of planning around Cyber Monday. And then you have that Panic Monday, that Monday before Christmas that, um, that everyone will start panicking. And normally you have Panic Christmas Eve Day when you get all the dads coming in because they've been told by their wives that they need to come and pick something up and they've forgotten a week ago. Um, so we're constantly keeping up to date with everything. But yeah, we try and follow the real passionate campaigns for us is definitely Small Business Saturday. Awesome. Well, congratulations on that win. That's amazing. It was incredible. I loved it. And I'm still getting opportunities now. So it's, it really does. The power is amazing. That's awesome. So Robin, I, I know that we have a few items on our checklist too. Some really specific tips that Vistprint has about, you know, promoting during those top three selling days, the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Small Business Saturday. Uh, what, what do we recommend? Yeah. So I, I would, I would, Further um, enhance the point that Small Business Saturday is such a wonderful opportunity for small businesses to really have their customers get behind them. Um, it's a time to celebrate them and to celebrate your business. Um, it's a great time to offer um, special offers as well as to give a bit of a different experience when they come into your shop so that they feel like they're really um, supporting you and getting to know you as a business. Um, the, the relationship building that Charlotte was talking about earlier on social is so important. Um, both on social as well as in your store environment and really making those connections with people. Uh, one thing that I would recommend that people um, sometimes aren't thinking about during this time is also to start pushing some bounce back offers and other things that um, can be used in the future. So you are hitting this high traffic time. You're seeing more customers than ever um, during the rest of the year. And this is a great time to keep that relationship building. 
So those bounce back offers in December for January gets them coming back in for um, further opportunities. Um, so they stay your customer all year long. Awesome, thank you. And I know, you know, December seems so far away now and the slowing down of the rush probably feels like it will never come. But we, Robin, we have some tips about when, you know, business does eventually kind of calm down for the season as the holidays actually, you know, happen and people have theoretically done their shopping on time. What do we recommend at Vistaprint that an owner take some of that downtime to do uh, whenever they do get that time, hopefully in sure. December, right before sure. Christmas? So the first thing is don't panic, <laughs> because uh, as you can hear from Charlotte, the day before <laughs> Christmas, everybody's going to be back in the door. Um, the sales will be coming in. It's just a matter of really leveraging that time to to um, to reflect and and to get yourself prepared for the season ahead. So um, first, don't close the day of Christmas that you're you're going to be open for years to come, and you want to make sure that you're prepared. So. It's a good time to record and analyze your results. It's a good time to, um, to pull together some um, great tips from what others are doing. Um, come next Christmas, you're going to be like, oh, remember that great business? I can't remember exactly what they did, but it was so cool. Write it down, take screenshots. Um, if you have the opportunity, go explore some of the other stores in the area and, and see how they're handling the holidays. Just really getting inspired during this time. Um, don't worry that you didn't get to it this year. It's just great inspiration for next and, and the next season um, that's right around the corner. Um, but it's really, it's really a time to make sure you are analyzing and reflecting and doing more of a postmortem on now and then getting your inventory mm -hmm. and everything ready um, for when, you know, right after the holidays, mm -hmm. everyone starts visiting again. And definitely a good time to send those thank yous out too in December, right? Oh, perfect. I forgot about the thank yous. Yes, that customer, if I come away with anything from this, it's really about maintaining and building um, those customer relationships. I think we've seen actually in these COVID times that it's even more important than ever. Um, people are really there to support small businesses and, um, and having people understand the history of your business, the story behind it, the passion you have, that all of that, um, getting that to your customers really um, creates those long-term customers, um, which is what we all want. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's one of the few good things maybe that's come out of recent times is that people really are supporting their small businesses and small business owners are kind of pulling back that veil in a way and showing like the human behind the business and people are really connecting to that. And I love that idea that you mentioned too, if you do have the time to just kind of wander around and see the other stores and see what you like and what you might want to pick up for next year. Right. Charlotte, what does, um, what does December look like for you? I think it, it's probably pretty <laughs> crazy right up until the last minute, but are there any downtimes? Uh, how does the pace change and you know, what are you able to do to look ahead to the new year? So I think uh, sleepless nights and long hours, packing orders to make sure we get everything out. It's a real fun, well, it is normally a real fun time and I hope that somehow this year we can still bring that fun to that in-store experience of children coming in and looking at things and saying to mum and dad you know oh I like that can I put it on my Christmas list so it, it's going to be a massive learning curve this year for us because it is going to be slightly different um, but yeah in terms of understanding what's happened this year will be able to help us next year hopefully next year we'll be in a different situation um, but making notes making notes of what worked well what didn't go so well should I have bought into more of this theme I could have pulled back on this theme understanding that customer behavior and what they're really looking for um, and really it is right up until Christmas Eve before you know that last parcel has been delivered that last customer is really happy that her order that she's been tracking has arrived and she signed for it. And then we close the door on Christmas Eve and then we can kind of go home and relax. And what's really lovely is in previous years, um, the following on Christmas day, parents will upload shots of their children playing with their toys, saying thank you, booze, toy shop, and, and for other retailers as well. And that feeling is the best feeling ever that you know that you've put a smile on a child's face um, on Christmas morning. But yeah, December is, it's crazy. It's very energizing and you've got to keep on top of it. I think if you start to, you need to be, you need to be drinking coffee, that's for sure. Um, and 
it's very rewarding as well. I think it's probably one of the, the, the funnest times to be in the toy shop. But this year, as I said, it's going to be a learning curve. I'm interested to see what happens and how many people we can physically get through the door with the rules that we have in place in the UK. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. And it'd be interesting at possible to, you know, uh, this time next year, look at how we cope, look, look at how we manage to get through. And um, yeah, definitely going to be one to, definitely one for the memory box, that's for sure. I'm sure. Do you have any uh, gut feelings or hunches, predictions about what will be different for you this year? Um, Obviously, like you said, fewer people through the door, but what, yeah. what do you think it's going to look like? So one of the hardest things for us this year, we always have Santa at the toy shop and children come and see Santa. And sadly, Santa's not able to visit us here at Booze this year. Um, so that's going to be a big change for us because children do come in and post their letters to Santa, which we're still going to do. Um, they can still come in and post their letters. Um, I think the worrying thing at the moment for me is how um, we were kind of a smallish shop. Um, so we can only really have two families in at once with the current rules. So it's just going to be about managing um, expectations and people queuing outside. And we've got some fun things planned where we've got a really lovely cafe over the road and I'm going to have a chat with them to see if um, we can order hot chocolates for those that are waiting outside. We've got a balcony, so hopefully they won't get, you know, if it's raining, they'll stay dry. Um, we'll hand out mince pies, we'll hand out Christmas cake and we'll just kind of encourage those um, lovely customers outside. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll break out into a little song or something to, 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 to cheer them all up. Um, but yeah, at the moment, it's very unpredictable what's going to happen. And I think it is just a learning curve every single day. Um, but fingers crossed, we'll, it will be okay. And um, we'll have fun with it. We'll find a way to have fun. I absolutely love, I love what you just described that you're going to do, um, not just in your store, but outside of your store. It's at every, every possible touch point. That's how everybody should be thinking about this, um, is how do you make that magical interaction with your customers at every possible touch point. And we didn't have lines outside of stores the way that we're going to have lines this year. And um, it's a great example of, you know, a little hot chocolate could go a long way. Absolutely. Yes. I think I've definitely experienced that myself. <laughs> That's something you could totally print on a mug. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so we have about eight minutes left. Um, I'll turn it over to our audience for questions now. Um, just a reminder, if you're on the Zoom, you can use the Q&A button at the bottom. If you're on Facebook, just put your question in the comments and we'll get those here. Um, our first question here, Charlotte, this is for you. So you mentioned doing social media planning and connecting with people. Do you have further tips on how to do that effectively? So maybe you could just elaborate a little bit on how, how you're planning for social media for the holidays. Yep, so um, we have a strong social media calendar that we basically, we print out and we try and aim to do three posts a day um, coming up to this time because it's busier. We want to try and increase our stories to around 15 stories a day and we will pick out key toys and gifts to look at, promote, talk about, to go into more detail about them. Um, that way they're on our grid so people can see them and then also we're doing extra by going into our stories and going into a bit more and explaining about things. In your stories make sure you're tagging people, um, the company that the gift is from um, or the supplier, um, any um, influencers that you may be working with and, um, and make sure you tag that product so it links back to your website because that's the quickest way. The conversion on actually shopping through social media is quite phenomenal. Um, have that plan right up. It does get a bit trickier in December because you're juggling multiple plates. Um, and I do tend to kind of schedule my Facebook posts um, a week in advance, but on Instagram, I tend to do it on the day because I haven't quite found that application that I'm happy with working with. But definitely um, have a look at what some of the magazines are doing as well in terms of um, for influence and in, in terms of what what the focus is for November. So as I said, we've gone for this woodland theme in our windows because it's very much about that autumnal um, feel and foxes and badges and everything at the moment. So we're kind of trying to make that connection with grandparents and other parents um, and, and the things that they're looking at. Maybe they're looking themes for their own home, but yeah, definitely have that plan. Look at the product, look at your stock inventory and also look at things that you 
have got a lot of stock of that maybe you think I need to, to, to kind of get some of this moving and focus on that for a couple of days. And it's quite incredible. And you can play around with your plan as well, but definitely Facebook, get your post scheduled in. We tend to do one at seven o'clock in the morning over here, one at around one o'clock and then one around eight o'clock in the evening. And then Instagram, we just really ad hoc on our stories, but we still keep it within the theme that we want to be talking about. Awesome. That's so helpful. Thank you. And I actually have a question myself to add on to that. You said that you are aiming to do 15 stories a day. That sounds like a lot. Is it, is it tough to get all of that content? Um, it can be, but when you're actually talking about a product and you, and you get that passion behind it and, and some of those stories can be lives as well. And we can get people interacting with us. So what's great when we do a live story is that people will say, Oh, can you just move back this way? So I can see that product. Um, we also do a day in the life of the toy shop. So, you know, I'll come in at nine o'clock in the morning and be like, Hey guys, um, look at the toy shop this morning. Look at all these boxes that are going out. Wow. We've just had a ph phenomenal delivery and actually open the delivery in front of your live audience or on your story. And that again, makes people think, Oh my God, they're going to be adding new stuff to their website or have they got that back in stock now? So it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, planned as in terms of product. But sometimes I just like to jump on and have chat with people. I think uh, the one thing COVID's taught me is that it can be quite lonely when you're in your in your business if you're an independent on your own. And the best audience to have is your is your social media audience. So, you know, mums and grandparents and friends love to come on and have a chat. And I think it's I think it's fun. Awesome, thank you. So our next two questions are actually they're, they're pretty similar. So I'm I'm actually going to group them together into a two-pronged question and it's really about managing customer expectations so one is about customer service with orders and shipping and the other is about managing expectations with the, the cues that you mentioned Charlotte so Charlotte maybe we could start with you and then Robin perhaps you can add some perspective from what we've seen from other different customers but what are your suggestions for the customer service approach to people uh, customers who are frequently contacting about the status of their order and shipping and how do you manage those expectations? And then secondly, how do you plan to manage the expectations of customers about how many people can be in the store and, and that they need to wait outside and things like that? So I know that that's kind of a big question. <laughs> Overall, it's all about managing expectations. Absolutely. So our standard, we set a standard shipping of three to five working days uh, for the toy shop. Um, we do offer next day delivery. Um, as long as those items are in stock. So say we've opened up some pre-orders, obviously that won't become available until the customer can come in, um, until the orders have come in. Um, I think it's really important to reassure your customers. And you do sometimes get a lot of, you know, if there's something that a customer has been desperately trying to find and they get nervous thinking, is it going to arrive? Is it going to arrive? It's just about that reassurance and saying, yep, it's here. We're working our way through. Um, obviously we're doing everybody's in order um, so have that engagement with customers never be frightened to say do you know I'm, I'm, I'm you know running behind today I missed the delivery pickup um, but it will go tomorrow and then make sure that you update your notifications through your website as well the biggest thing I would say to customers is always check your junk box as well because we get so many customers messaging us saying has my order been dispatched and we're like yeah we've sent you a notification have you received it and then they said, I've just found it in my junk box. So maybe as a tip, check your junk box as well. And then that will give you a bit more reassurance. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my, my top tips for trying to manage expectations on deliveries. Obviously before Christmas, um, we do have a cutoff day of around the 20th of December. That just means that hopefully everything will get to people on time and it will avoid any disappointment. Awesome, thank you. Robin, anything that we've learned? Yeah, I think it, it's um, over communication is key. I, I think, you know, when, when you're, when people are placing their orders, let them know about what, um, what the shipping looks like well in advance. When they place their order, make sure that they know when their order specifically will arrive. Um, if they contact you, make sure you're getting back to them to, to ease any of their concerns. And, um, and it's just, it's basically just the organization of just following their order through and, and making sure that, um, that things are arriving properly. It's um, going above and beyond during the holidays too. It really, it just means so much. I think at Vistaprint, we, we try and do this too, is to just continue to 
to communicate with our customers and, and you know, respond to them on social media or respond when they call or their emails or so forth. Um, it really goes a long way. I, I know we all want to make sure that Santa's gifts are arriving on time. And, um, and so anything we can do to ease any of those concerns is, is paramount. Absolutely. I definitely agree with that communication and that reassurance can have a big impact. So we are, we're right at about time. Um, so we're going to wrap it up for today, but we like to end these by asking the guests what their final thought is from the discussion. Um, so Charlotte, if there's one key takeaway or final thought that you want to leave the audience with, what would that be? Um, have fun over Christmas. Um, enjoy everything this year. We're going to, it's going to be different. There's no, there's no doubt about that. But from a business owner, take note what's happened over the last few months. Take note, especially what happens in December. And um, one of the things I've loved hearing today is actually the idea of going out and seeing what other people's doing for that inspiration for next year. I always look at, um, we have a company over here called John Lewis, and they always come out with the most amazing Christmas campaign TV. And I think one day I'm going to be better than you guys. Um, <laughs> So it really is taking, absorbing everything and then between Christmas and New Year, brainstorming, writing it all down and then start planning again. Because let's face it, in the toy shop business, we have to start planning again in January because that's when the toy fairs are. So, um, but most of all this Christmas, just, you know, stay safe, have fun and most importantly, be kind to everybody. Perfect. I love it. Thank you. Robin, how about you? What would your one final thought be? Well, uh, so... I just want to say, Charlotte, I am so taken by your passion for your business that I think I want to open up a toy shop. You just sound, it sounds wonderful. And going to a toy show just sounds amazing. Um, but I, I think my, my one piece of advice to people are actually, I'm going to give you two. One is it's not too late to start planning. Um, definitely get behind your, your overall plan now. This is the time. Um, and the second piece is really about building those relationships with your customers. I think I've, I've been pushing that as my agenda in this call a little bit, just to make sure that you take this great opportunity when you're seeing so many of them um, to really send those notes, have those events, have those conversations, just build those relationships um, that will last and, and help you through in the coming year. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you both so much for being on today. I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing all of these tips with our audience. Absolutely. Thank you. Good luck, Charlotte. Thank you. And have a great Christmas, everybody. You too. You. Merry Christmas. <laughs> um, just one quick uh, final thing for our audience. Uh, we will be hosting these regularly. If you've been joining us, you know that. Um, there's a survey at the end. We would love if you would take it. It's very quick. Let us know what you would like to hear more about. And then finally, there is an article version of some of these tips that Robin has been going through. And you can find it on vistaprint.com slash hub um, if you would like a handy little checklist to print out and kind of keep with you when you're planning. So this has been Home Office Hours Live, and we'll talk with you soon. Thank you again for joining us. Bye.